some 3D printed miniatures that you see here, or at least one of them. We'll see how far I get. Uh, but these are all kind of fun because they are seasonally themed. Uh, at the time of recording, it is in that kind of lull between Christmas and New Year's. And uh, so I've got a handful of seasonally appropriate, like wintry kind of Christmassy uh, miniatures uh, to paint here. And uh, actually, this video topic was selected by members of this channel's uh, Patreon and YouTube memberships. This is the Supporter's Choice video for December 2023. All supporters at the Fusro and Fusro Da tiers get to uh, vote in a poll each month to select the topic of a video on the channel. And uh, this month, it was actually a tie. Uh, it was a tie between this option, uh, painting seasonal miniatures, or a gaming slash streaming setup tour video. And in the case of a tie, I just make a decision, <laughs> usually based on, you know, what I'm feeling like. And uh, I've been really uh, wanting to paint some minis lately, but life has been very busy. So uh, this seemed like a, a great opportunity uh, to do that. So this is, uh, you know, the supporter's choice, but also sort of my choice. Uh, for those who voted for the uh, gaming setup video, uh, don't despair. Uh, it will return in January's poll. I suspect that we'll end up doing that video at some point. So, a big thank you to all the channel supporters who voted in this month's poll. And if you, dear viewer or listener, yes, that's you, you right there, uh, would like to um, have the opportunity to vote in these polls, um, have some say over the, you know, kind of content that uh, I create here on this channel, and uh, also support me and this channel while you're at it, and plus get some other fun perks like early access to my weekend videos and, and other things, um, please uh, consider taking a look at the links down below. At the top of the video description, you'll find a link there to my Patreon and my YouTube memberships, uh, and I'm sure you will find a tier there that is right for you. So, a big shout out to this channel's amazing supporters, and a big thank you to those who voted for this topic. So, um, I pretty recently got back into painting miniatures. I used to paint them many years ago, Warhammer primarily, um, but I uh, took a long hiatus from that. But uh, earlier this year, I got a 3D printer, and uh, I've been having fun uh, printing minis and uh, painting them at least a little bit. Although, uh, again, it's, it's the kind of thing you really have to you know, intentionally make time for. Um, but it's it's been really um, awesome sort of rediscovering my love of painting minis. And um, I also recently discovered, thanks to the recommendations of some friends, uh, these, these paints, these speed paints, they call them, uh, from the Army Painter. Uh, which are these fantastic, um, very sort of free-flowing paints that provide uh, a lot of nice depth in just a single coat. You'll see what I mean. If you're not familiar with them, you'll see what I mean. Um, and uh, I've been learning how to use those, um, but uh, I've also been experimenting with some other um, sort of techniques.
tweaks to make those speed paints look even better. And um, what I'm going to be trying today is something that uh, was recommended by a friend and indeed by some of you in my last miniatures painting video. And that is the concept of a zenithal highlight. A zenithal highlight. Sort of. Um, so a zenithal highlight is where you, um, you prime your model with a matte black primer like this. And then you use a white primer to uh, prime, just spray just directly um, on top, like straight from above, as if the white primer is the sunlight hitting the model from above. And what that does is it, it makes just all the uh, upper exposed surfaces um, white. And so they will, of course, uh, come out brighter. Um, when you paint them, the colors will be brighter and more saturated, and it leaves all the sort of undersides of things and the recesses, uh, you know, black, like that original coat, and therefore they retain that shadowed look, and it's a way of adding more contrast and more depth um, in sort of an easy, quick way. Now, as you can see, I've primed these with, in black, but not in white. Um, but I'm going to use a slightly different technique here, uh, which is the dry brush technique. So instead of, you know, just spraying uh, white primer on top, I'm actually going to use the matte white um, war paint from the Army Painter to gently dry brush and attempt to just catch the raised surfaces, the highlights with white. And that has a similar effect to the zenithal highlight, but you have a little bit more control over it. Um, and this was recommended to me by a friend, and so I'd like to give it a shot and see how it turns out. Um, you're probably wondering about the models that I have here, uh, so let me introduce to you what I've got. Um, I have, so, so these are pretty fun. Uh, this is the one I think we're going to paint. This is a Santa Claus adventurer, or so it's called. Um, it's uh, sort of a D&D-ish looking take on uh, Santa Claus. And um, I think that'll be really fun to try painting. Um, I don't know exactly what I will use these models for, if anything. <laughs> But one imagines, perhaps, for some kind of D&D campaign, or uh, at least one shot that I might run in the future, that's got kind of a Christmas theme. Here we have something a fair bit more ridiculous. We've got Angry Gingerbread Man. An Angry Gingerbread Man about to smack you with a, with a lollipop. Um, and I think that could be really fun to paint as well. Another similar one here, wielding a pair of candy canes. They are very mad, these ginger red men. And then down here, I have um, something a bit more elaborate. This uh, model, I believe, is called a um, Winter Fay Queen. So she's supposed to be like a fairy queen, but a wintry one. Her wings are made of ice crystals. Um, this could be fun to paint as well, but uh, I kind of just want to do the Santa Claus. We'll see, though. We'll see. We'll see how much time we have here and how long this all takes. It takes me a lot longer than you might expect. Um, I'm not a very fast painter, even with the so-called speed paints. Uh, you know, I, I do take my time. Um, and, uh... All of these models are from um, a creator on my mini factory. I forget their name. I think it's Mia K. Mia K, I believe. But I'll put a link to their shop down below uh, in the video description just in case you're curious. But they have all kinds of fun winter and Christmassy themed miniatures there um, on that shop. And um, they seem you know, pretty cool. So, uh, I, I bought these there. Uh, 
say they came out a little smaller, I guess, than I was expecting, you know, when I printed them. Um, and when I say I, I bought these, I mean I bought the the 3D model files, right, the STLs, which then I can print uh, with my, my resin printer. Um, but yeah, they're a little smaller than I had sort of expected. I might, if I were to print them again, scale them up by, you know, 50%, uh, just to make them a little a little larger and more manageable for painting, because this, you know, is quite finely detailed and really small. <laughs> really small. So we'll see how this turns out. It, it might not be the greatest looking uh, result, but I'm going to give it a shot. So the first thing that we have to do, as I said, is um, dry brush with this matte white uh, paint. So I'm just going to give this a shake over here. The Army Painter paints all come with uh, little mixing balls um, integrated, which is really nice. Um, so I just give it a good shake and we'll put a little dollop of matte white over here on my very high-tech palette. <laughs> just just uh, take out container lid but it does the trick. And, uh, it's been a long time since I really dry brushed anything, so, uh, let's just move these aside here. Um, I'm gonna have to sort of work on my technique, I guess, but I used to do a lot of dry brushing, uh, when I painted Warhammer. But the idea is that you, you have a a dry brush, as the name suggests, and you get just a bit of paint on there, and then you actually, you don't want that much, um, so you, you draw it across a paper towel like that, and get off the majority of it, and then you very gently draw across the surface of your model. In fact, I need even less paint than that. And you, you attempt to capture the highlights with your paint. And the idea is to capture those raised surfaces, or, you know, paint those raised surfaces with uh, a bit of, a bit of white, but leave the recessed areas dark. And you can see how as you do that, it starts to bring out details. Hopefully. Anyway, that's the idea. <laughs> and you really don't need much paint on your brush to do this, uh, as I am reminding myself as we're going here. It does not take much at all. Um, the brush that I'm using here for this is actually a so-called dry brush, according to um, the Army Painters here, the company. Army Painter is the company, um, and it's got this kind of angled brush head, which I guess is designed to be drawn across in this fashion. And you can see I'm not like coming down on on the uh, model. I'm not sort of stippling down on it. You know, like I'm just drawing it across at this very oblique angle. Um, with the intent of really just catching those surficial details. So our Santa character here is starting to look a little bit frosty, <laughs> kind of frosted. Um, but that's exactly what we want. So this is essentially providing a base layer, right, um, of contrast which are 
our speed paints will then take advantage of. And so, yeah, with the Zenithal highlight, you could do this uh, faster and sort of in a more almost automated fashion with a, with a white uh, primer spray. Um, but uh, I wanted to try it this way because what this does let me do is this sort of capture maybe a little bit more of the detail, especially on some of the angles and sides where the zenithal highlight wouldn't really, um, but where I might want to actually sort of have some of that detail show up. Now, uh, I hope I'm not overdoing this, you know, um, or underdoing it, like, we'll just have to see. This is a learning experience for me. But it's, you know, so far I think it's looking pretty good in terms of, like, the, the detail that's emerging um, from this process. And uh, I do hope that it So I'm just gonna go in on there, like so. That should help the head come out a bit brighter. A little bit more detail in the beard here and in his face. These are quite detailed models, and like I said, it, it printed out quite small. <laughs> so, and of course, you know, I if I had been paying a bit more attention, I, I would have noticed that it was going to print small. Um, you know, you can see the measurements uh, exactly as it's going to come out uh, when you, uh, you know, lay it out in the software for printing and prepare your, your file for printing. Um, but I just wasn't paying super close attention. So that's on me. Also say that if any of you, oops, that was a bit much on that boot there. So I kind of flattened. Oh, my stomach's making an appearance. <laughs> um, I will. I accidentally kind of like blew out some of the detail on that boot there by dry brushing with like too wet a brush, if that makes sense. Like too much paint loaded on there, and. Um, and so, you know, the highlights, the details on that boot might not show up so well, uh, which is too bad, but, you know, you, you do your best. If I wanted, I guess I could take some, you know, black primer, um, slap it on there, and then attempt the dry brush again. But, uh... For our purposes, I think we'll just keep moving along here. I gotta say, I have been, you know, continue to be uh, extremely impressed with the detail that this, this printer uh, can render. Um, it does a amazing job of, of uh, printing these very finely detailed models. Um, it's amazing what, what 3D printers can do these days, really. I don't really need to be doing the highlights around the edges of the base here, or the dry brushing, but I guess if I do, you know, paint this, uh, well, I guess it's supposed to be snow, so it's going to be painted white anyway, but maybe this will just help add a little bit more depth to the snow. I don't know. I'm not quite 
quite sure how I'm gonna do the bass exactly, but whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> My stomach. Uh, it sounds like it's gonna be very present in this video. I, uh, I had a big dinner earlier, but that was quite some time ago, and I guess, I guess it's just decided that it's just gonna make a bunch of noise. It's hungry. Okay, so I think, I think we've pretty much done what needed just to be done here with this dry brush. And, um, it'll be really interesting to see how this comes out. But the hope is that it gives a bit more depth and contrast than uh, the last time I did this, which, you know, I was pretty happy with the outcome the last time I did this. Um, but, or the last time I, you know, did a video, uh, a painting video, so I mean. But, um, I did feel like you know, especially the highlights were lacking a little bit. So my hope, my hope is that this will help bring all those highlights out. So there is the dry brushed, frosted looking Santa model, uh, which, you know, like even just in this state actually doesn't look too bad, right? Um, obviously very grayscale, but, uh, you really get a lot of fun detail that way, just with that dry brush. But now it's time to uh, use some actual colors. So let's think about this. What do we want here? I, I'm going to want some red on here for sure. Uh, I'm going to want some white on here for sure. <laughs> um, gosh, what have we got? We've got... Um, like this white trim, I think, right, around the edges. All the rest of this is going to be um, a nice red. Um, this looks like he's got a log here, so this is going to be a, a brown. And he's also got a couple of ropes here, which are going to be brown. Um, maybe like a leather satchel here. It's actually going to be a lot of brown. <laughs> he's kind of got this leather backpack. And then the ropes and the, the uh, log, so we're going to have to find a way to kind of differentiate those a little bit. Uh, this will be red, 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 red. Um, the trim around his cuffs um, and around his shoulders, this big fur mantle he's got, are going to be white, I suppose. I mean, it's going to be a lot of red and white, but he is Santa Claus after all. His beard will be white, of course. His hat, red and white. Um, he's kind of got these, like, boots that look like maybe they're... It's actually kind of hard to tell what's going on there, but maybe... Like, leather straps wrapped around his ankles. Not quite sure, but that seems like a solid solid guess. So I think we're just going to start throwing stuff on there and just see how it looks. See how it looks. And then this belt, we could maybe do a bit of gold. It would be nice to have some gold accents. The belt, of course, is probably leather too. He's got a couple little pouches. Not quite sure where we would put the gold. Also, I apologize if I'm uh, not if he's not centered on the camera, uh, sometimes it's hard for me to inspect it. I you know, expect the model up close and then also sort of keep, you know, uh, one eye on the, the camera viewfinder. So, but all right, let's start with the, gosh, I'm actually, well, well let's start with the red, I guess. Um, now I've got this, <laughs> this so-called slaughter red, uh, which I think is the most Santa Clausy looking red, um, that I've got, at least in the speed paints. Um, there are, there's a couple other reds here. I've got murder scene, but that's, I don't know. What do you think? I feel like we've got like a fresh.
fresh blood versus dried blood. I feel like fresh blood is a more Santa Claus color. <laughs> so let's let's try that. Um, hopefully it looks it looks nice. Um, just give it a shake here. I am wondering if maybe I should do the the light uh, parts first, like the white trim and such. Um, I can't really remember what the recommended order is for this sort of stuff uh, with the speed paints. Whether, oops, it's recommended to do uh, light first and then then dark or dark first and then light. Um, but the way the speed paints work, the lighter colors don't really cover up the darker ones very well. Um, maybe we do want to start with the white and then sort of, well, sure, let's try that. It'll be an experiment. Um, so I do have holy white here, a grayish white as it's described. I actually just noticed that they have a description on each of these. I did not see that before. This is a deep red, a grayish white. What have we got over here? Dark wood, a deep brown. So let's, uh, let's shake that. Gotta give it a really good, good shake. Um, and we'll try the holy white and see how it works. Now I could use that matte white that I was using before. Oops, goodness. It'd be great if I didn't smack you in the ear. Uh, we could use the matte white, but um, the problem with that is that it's not really gonna flow and we're not gonna get that sort of sense of depth that I'm looking for. So we'll try the holy white and we'll see how it goes. So with these speed paints, they are quite liquidy and um, they're designed to flow into all the cracks and crevices. So let's just try it on here and just kind of slop it on and see how that's going to look. I guess we're going to have a more gray than white mantle here, <laughs> but that might be okay. I don't know. We can always use that dry brush technique to go back over uh, again to just really pick up some of those highlights if uh, we're not totally happy with the result of uh, this uh, holy white coat. Or we could, to, in order to sort of differentiate his beard from his mantle here, what we could do is um, you know, leave the, the mantle kind of as is once we've slopped on this uh, this holy white. But then, then, um, use that dry brush technique on his, on his beard to make his beard as white as the snow. He's such a small model, it's actually pretty hard to see what's going on here. <laughs> Let's just load some of that into his beard as well. And his mustache, of course.
well, it, it certainly looks gray. Um, and I guess I was hoping for something a little whiter, but I think we are gonna have to re-dry brush after and see how that looks. I mean, maybe we could have just left it as it was, you know, with the, uh, just that first dry brush coat, but you live and learn, you live and learn. It's all so tiny. I have to have my glasses off to do this. I, uh... Oops. I'm getting some of the gray onto his, his arm there, but you know what? It, it probably doesn't matter because we will. Uh... We will be just using the red, which I think is gonna overwrite anything sort of lighter. That's my hope. So, but that does mean we have to be very careful when it comes time to put that red on because it's going to, it will definitely show up if we accidentally get a bit on his fur sections here. Yeah, I think we're definitely going to want to come back with that white dry brush and sort of re-highlight some of the details in his, uh, in his fur sections. Because right now he just kind of looks like a pile of gray, but I have faith, I have faith this is gonna, this is gonna work. Uh, it's just a, a temporary situation. Let's, there. I didn't want it. I wonder if I can maybe pull some of that out with a, a dryer brush. Not the dry brush, but a dryer brush. Because I don't really want that in there. There we go. That worked. sort of relearning how to paint, <laughs> uh, you know, remembering how to, how to paint, but also, um, learning how to use these speed paints, which are, you know, pretty different than conventional paints in terms of their, the way 
way you apply them and their sort of flow properties, you know. Um, they're wonderful in many ways, but they can also be a little difficult to work with. Okay, let's try that. So I think we've kind of hit the, the main parts that we want with the, uh, the gray here. And I know it's looking pretty drab. It's definitely looking pretty drab, but I'm pretty sure that as soon as we pull out this, uh, this red, where did I put that over here? The slaughter red, uh, things are going to start looking pretty cool. holiday seasons. If you celebrate Christmas, I hope you had a lovely Christmas. And, uh, this will be the last video of the year for me. So, I suppose this is a, as good a time as any to wish you all a wonderful, happy new year as well. because <laughs> uh, you probably, well, most of you will probably be seeing this um, on the last day of 2023. If you're watching this when it comes out, I mean, many of you might not be, but uh, early access folks on the Patreon and the YouTube memberships will get this a little bit earlier than that, but um, so it might be next year for you. <laughs> How's 2024 so far? Hopefully, a 
hopefully good. Okay, let's bring this red up onto his arm. for a red color uh, for Santa Claus. I like the way it's looking in terms of the saturation. I think we need a little bit more on the palette there. But let's just that there. Good, good. As it dries, it will look a little bit duller. Ooh, that's gooey. <laughs> yeah. um, it will look a little bit duller. And that's just because it's going on to a largely black uh, surface. So again, this is a learning thing, but maybe, maybe I do want a bit more, uh, load on a bit more of the white with the dry brush so that all the surfaces have at least a bit of white on them, you know, um, or most of them. That might help it, uh, look a little more saturated. Okay, so this arm should be all red, right? Like so. I guess the leather of his backpack back here, so we don't really want to impinge upon that. Um, but his side over here uh, is probably, I guess, there's like a backpack strap there maybe, but also, also some, uh, probably some red in there, but like that. And up under here, like that. And I guess in this little triangle here, this would be where I should be using the insane detail brush, which I have. Now that worked out okay-ish, I guess. Um, and then, I don't know what we want to do with his pants, but I think I'll just stick to the red, uh, because it's easy, <laughs> and I don't know what else, what other color I'd make Santa Claus's pants, so let's just come on in here, and let's get all this, now this in here, of course, is pretty dark, um, so, uh, and that's by, you know, by design, right, um, so the red in here should look probably, oh, I managed to slop a little bit of red onto onto the side of his trim there. That's not quite what I wanted, but, um, yeah, the red in here should look duller, you know, and darker, which is what we want because it's supposed to be in shadow, right? Um, we can just get a bunch of it on the inside of his coat there, just kind of go down there. And, um, it's looking okay, I think. I guess his belly here should probably be red. Like so. And, uh, 
house there. And his hat also is going to have to get the red treatment. Like this. You want to be careful here not to get too much red in there or else it's going to flow into his headband of his hat, which we don't want. Just one a little more down here. And just a touch into the crevasse there. Okay. All right. I think that's it. I think that's all right. So, uh, I think we've got the majority of the red done. Um, I think it's looking all right. I do wish that it came out a little brighter, a little more ready, um, but that's probably just a learning thing with how much to dry brush, you know? Um, so, okay, so uh, what's next here? Uh, I think next, there's a lot of brown on this, and I would like to find a way to kind of differentiate uh, the leather from the the wood. So um, I have dark wood, which would be appropriate for the wood. Uh, but let me just see what else we've got here. Um, I've got pallid bone, but that's going to be too light for leather. Um, warrior skin's probably too pinkish. Doesn't help that I have my glasses off because that helps me see up close, but it's not good for seeing further afield, so I have to uh, bring each of these paints a little closer. Oh, we've got the desolate brown. That's the one. I think that's the one that we, that we want to use for the leather and the rope. And then uh, the, um, the dark wood for the wood. <laughs> okay, so um, let's do the desolate brown first, maybe. So this is, uh, what did they describe it as? Olive. Oh, that's a little greenish maybe. Well, whatever. We'll try it. I'm colorblind, <laughs> as I've said before. And, uh, you know, I can see, like, a lot of colors, but, uh, reds and greens and browns tend to sort of blend together and cause me problems, so I don't know. Maybe he has a greenish, brownish backpack. Fine by me. I don't really care. <laughs> Might look weird to you guys, but we will, we will try this and see how it comes out. I guess there's the question of what to do with, um, with is, oops, um, the ropes there too. And that I, don't quite know. Okay, well now we're getting quite a bit of this desolate brown onto the, the log that he's carrying, so I think I probably, uh, this is a little too wet. It's really flowing a lot, so 
I think my brush was probably a bit too, a bit too wet there, but, ah, uh, well. Now he's got a little, a tiny little ornament, uh, or a button or something on the back of his, uh, backpack here, which I'm going to, uh, try and do, uh, in gold. I think. And you know what? I'm thinking I'm just going to go and desolate brown these ropes as well. Um, because I think that's just the appropriate color for them. <laughs> um, but that does mean we don't get very good contrast between the ropes and the backpack, which is too bad, but don't know. I could maybe try a little uh, palette bone like highlight of sorts on the ropes to give them a little differentiation. I'm not being too careful uh, around this log because, truth be told, the dark wood is a darker brown, which, you know, should kind of overwrite uh, what I'm doing with the, the desolation brown here. I'm also going to use that desolation brown on all these details on the front uh, here, um, such as his belt, like so. And this strap under his arm, which I'm taking to be some kind of backpack strap that should probably be brown. Sometimes it's hard to tell at this scale. You just, things are open to interpretation. <laughs> um, he's got these little satchels on his belt, which they do have a little bit of hardware on them, but there's literally no way I can paint uh, brown, or gold or silver or something at that level of detail, so we're just going to paint them all. Um, in desolate brown. <laughs> Santa's got a lot of desolate brown. But, oh well. Um, the speed paint metallic colors are a little interesting. They're they look good, but um, they're not necessarily great for like detail work or dry brushing. Although I might try something to that effect here uh, on some of that hardware just to see how it how it might look. Uh, and then around this side here, this is more belt, so that should all be desolate brown. Just slop it all in there. <laughs> uh, and of course those, those recesses get really dark, but that's fine. But you can see, you know, with that highlight, I think we're going to get some nice detail out of those, those parts. I think that's actually going to look pretty good. And then, uh, and then oh, what the heck is going on with his his boots. I honestly am having a hard time telling, but I think I'm just going to assume that they are leather, so they're also going to be in this desolate brown. But I think he also has some fur down there, which we're going to actually probably want to go back to our our only white, uh, just to, to put a little tiny bit on there. Uh, but I'll do the desolate brown first. Just kind of backwards from how we did previously, but... Oh well. Just need a little more of the brown. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's just do that. Actually, need a bit more red down here, or 
you know, I can just slop brown on it like I just did, whatever. <laughs> it's all good. It's kind of hard to tell where the leather straps end and his pant leg starts anyway, so... And the truth be told, probably no one is ever going to look that closely. We are looking more closely at this now than anyone ever will after this. <laughs> so... Alright, so he's kind of got these leather bound, these wraps there, and then I'm also going to use the desolate brown on the shoe part of his feet. I'm thinking there's, there's a little bit, this little plastic bit here, I don't know if you can see it, um, on his right foot, or his left foot I guess. I'm wondering if maybe that was actually just part of a support that I failed to uh, remove properly. Or if there is indeed something else going on with his feet there, or supposed to be with his shoes or boots. But I really can't tell. So, it is what it is. Maybe it's supposed to be like a buckle, you know? But, hard to say at this scale. I imagine you can't really see exactly what I'm doing here, but truth be told, I can barely see what I'm doing here. Anyway, I've just uh, gone in and, and done that, basically, and left uh, a bit of white in there, which is where the the holy white's going to go in, because I think supposed to be a bit of, uh, a bit of fur. And then, um, that weird piece of plastic on the front of his left foot is just going to be part of the fur. <laughs> Whatever's happening there, I don't know. I don't know. It's so small, you can't really tell. Um, okay, and that's fine. And we will, we will do the, like we're going to do with the rest of him, the white dry brush will do. Um, and I really think that will actually make a lot of that pop in a nice way. Like a lot of his uh, uh, trim. So, okay, we've got to do this log at the back. We've got to do that little gold detail there. And, you know, he does have a face, which I guess we should use some kind of flesh color on, but it's so faint. <laughs> it's really... It's so small, I should say. It's going to be next to impossible to really differentiate that. And then we've got his hands as well. Now I guess we could just give him red gloves. That's probably the easiest thing to do. Um, but we could also use the flesh. 
flesh tone, and I guess if we're using a flesh tone for his face and whatnot, we could just put a little on his hands too. Okay, but let's do the dark wood, the dark wood on his on his log back there. It's not gonna take much, really. Um, it's probably more than I actually needed, but no oh well. It's not really that much darker, it's like a bit darker, but I guess there's a little bit of differentiation there at least, you know, just even if it's just a touch. So that's okay. It look, doesn't look too bad. Okay, so um, let's do his uh, fleshy bits. <laughs> Just to say, is his face and his hands. Uh, we have a warrior skin here. Um, I'm just looking for other options. We've got crusader skin, pale reddish brown. It describes it. Warrior skin is described as light reddish brown. Uh, what else we got here? Bright red. No, that's not not something we would want. Um, you know, I feel like Santa Claus is a fairly uh, pale dude, probably. We've got pallid bone, a pale yellowish brown. Is that gonna be too pale? Well, let's give it a shot and see. I think it might work out okay. But do we want yellowish or reddish? Light reddish brown. Reddish brown, maybe Crusader skin. You know what? Let's try Crusader skin. Might look awful, but we'll see. We'll see. We really don't need much of this because, uh, because, because. Uh, such a small amount of surface that's gonna need it. This might come out kind of darker than we want. I don't know. Especially because 
because, uh, you know, he's, uh, got the, the black, uh, undercoat there, but, okay, well, this is, uh, I'm really not quite sure. <laughs> this very, this, like, surprisingly dark, um, to manage to get a little bit onto his stomach there, but it might not matter. It might not matter because it's all kind of reddish, you know? And this is definitely a lighter reddish than than the uh, red on his suit. Yeah, this is not really working out good how I'd imagined, but I think maybe Pallet Bone is, is the one I, I was looking for, but that's okay. It's, uh, it's such a small, small amount of anything. Like, I just don't know that I can really get any level of detail when it comes to his face there. His eyes are sunken hollows. <laughs> it's really just like a little bit of flesh coloration on that nose that I'm going for here, I guess. But it's so, so small. You really can't tell or see. So it's kind of whatever. But yeah, I mean, there's like a bit of a flesh tone there. He's a pretty tan looking Santa Claus now. But that's okay. Uh, it looks fine. Okay, so um, we have a little gold highlight to do. Uh, where is my gold? Where is my gold? Uh, that's a pallet bone. Uh, ah, hope oh, like gold. There it is. It's just going to be the tiniest little blop on his back there. Just a teensy tiny little spot. Oh my gosh, we don't need very much. see what I'm doing at all, but I'll try and show you the end result. There we go. 
I think that actually kind of worked out. Maybe you can see. He's got a little buckle there, 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 along with his little gold medallion. And then on the front, just a little bit of gold detail on his belt pouches. Okay, that's, that's something for sure. All right, so now I think we go back to the dry brush. Um, and I'm going to try and just very carefully dry brush uh, a bit of white back over what I did with the gray on all his um, uh, fur trim. And I think this will bring back a bit of that contrast and really make it look a little whiter. Again. Um, but we're going to have to be very careful here. Really careful, because we could easily, easily overdo it. So I'm going to go with a really dry brush here. And uh, we'll see how that comes out. But let's just try that. That's working the way I want it to. I think we're getting what we want out of this, which is, oops, yeah, just brighten up these parts again and add a little more contrast again without overdoing it, hopefully. Brushing is honestly kind of magical sometimes, you guys. It really can really do an amazing job with. I mean, we could even use uh, just a very faint amount of just the faintest amount on some of these other surfaces just to catch those highlights, you know. I really don't want to go more than just the, the ever so faintest bit, though on that route. Let's try just very carefully getting a bit more of that white onto the trim again. Oops. Got some onto his belt. It's not the end of the world. He does have kind of a dark area in here that I haven't really done much of anything with. I guess that would be a flesh tone in there. Um, but it's, it's all pretty dark in there, kind of just the black primer, so I don't quite know how I would go about... Am I even on camera here? <laughs> how I would go about... You know, getting much of any color in there. Now I am managing to get a little bit of this white onto his red here, which is not quite what I wanted, but... We can lighten up his hand, hands, uh, both, I guess, a little bit with this dry brush as well. Possibly. some of those highlights a little bit, a little bit more detail 
on some of those. Um, and I, I really don't think it actually looks too bad.
I think I'll actually dry brush the white pretty heavily onto this base because, uh, you know, it's snow, so it's pretty bright white, right? I don't know, maybe I'm doing terrible things here, but... Okay, and then let's see if I can get a... Very, very sloppy here, but that's okay. Okay. All right, and now let's attempt the white dry brush magic, um, which we will use liberally on that base. Uh, because of the snow. The 
snow does look kind of muddy though because of how I've done this, right? Which is not really, wasn't necessarily my intention, but it's sort of how it's ended up being. I think that's all we have time for tonight, my friends. I know I teased you. 
you with these fun little gingerbread men <laughs> and uh, this gorgeous uh, Fae Queen model, Winter Fae Queen. But I'm gonna do them another day because this video is already getting pretty lengthy. And that is just how it ends. So, dear friends, thank you so much for joining me for another painting video. Um, you know, I'm obviously very amateurish at this, but uh, I do hope that you at least enjoy watching me struggle <laughs> or experiment, try out new things, you know. And um, a big thank you to our wonderful uh, supporters, uh, our patrons and YouTube members, and the Fusro and Fusro Die tiers who voted uh, for this topic. I hope you all enjoyed this, uh, this seasonal wintry, Christmassy uh, painting adventure that we have gone on here. And, uh, I, uh, hope that, uh, those, uh, who voted for the, uh, gaming, uh, setup tour, uh, are happy enough with this as well. And that will, of course, be again in next month's poll. So, uh, it's got another shot. Um, but thank you all so much for watching, and a very, very happy new year to you all. I hope that uh, the end of 2023 treated you well, and that 2024 is an amazing year for you all. And I look very forward to having you back here next time in the new year. Bye for now, my friends. Remember when I said earlier that this video was this month's supporters choice video and perhaps you were wondering who are these mysterious supporters, these amazing people? Well, wonder no longer because you can see all of their names right here. As a matter of fact, you can see our supporters names at the end of every one of my videos because that is one of the perks that all supporters of this channel on Patreon and YouTube memberships receive. Uh, their name in lights right here, or lights so to speak. Um, but at the Foose Row and above tier, those supporters get to vote in the monthly supporters choice polls. And um, I try to come up with some fun and interesting ideas for videos uh, to do here on the channel. And then those individuals get to select which of those ideas will make it to a video in that month. So you have just watched the supporters choice selection for December 2023. And at the very highest tier, the Fus Ro Da tier, those amazing individuals get all of the earlier perks, uh, including early access to all my weekend videos, which every tier gets. But those Fus Ro Da tier supporters also get a very special spoken shout out in every single video, because it is how I show my great gratitude, my thanks to those individuals. And so it is my honor to read to you, our Fus Ro Da tier supporters, for this video, starting with K Dime, Odin Sun, Drummer Brit, Rango Steel, Jake Loveney, and Ragnar Ragnarsson. A spectacular bunch of folks. Um, and also, we've got a new member this week. Everybody, please welcome Neebs uh, to the uh, Patreon. Neebs, it's wonderful to have you on board. Thanks for joining up. Uh, if you, dear viewer or listener, would be interested in joining the ranks of these fine folks and obtaining those uh, perks that I mentioned earlier, please take a look at the links down below in the video description. Both Patreon and YouTube memberships get essentially equivalent perks, um, and there are three tiers on each, and I'm sure that you can find a tier that is right for you. Once again, a big ol' thank you to this channel's amazing supporters. <laughs>